Tonight, medically speaking, let's get some answers. Joining us now is a computational biologist. I think that's the fanciest title you could ever have. Highly antici anticipated book also coming out explaining how COVID-19 and the outbreak started, also how it's evolving right now. Dr. Arul Rabadan joins us now from New York City where he's a professor at Columbia University. Professor, thank you for being here. I wanna start with your book, Understanding you. Coronavirus. I know it hits the shelves in July. U.S. intel agencies say they do not believe the coronavirus was created by humans and there's no evidence it was genetically modified in China. That's a lot of the scuttlebutt happening right now. But I know in your, in your book you're going to address misconceptions out, out there. What misconceptions are you going to address? Well, I mean, uh, several. One of those is uh, if we want to understand the origins of this virus, we have to understand how it's evolving. What are the coronaviruses? How many coronaviruses are there? Where do we, do we find the coronaviruses? And how they arrive to, to humans, to infect humans? And uh, this is one example. It's not the only example. I mean, we have uh, four coronaviruses circulating in humans already, and we learn many things from those coronaviruses that they are causing common cold. And uh, we have outbreaks that happened in 2003, uh, SARS and MERS in 2012. And these outbreaks, I mean, could continue happening because these viruses, they are circulating and they are mixing. So um, what I try to do is try to explain how, where do these viruses are coming from, how do they mix and they cause these new viruses infecting humans. You've also done extensive work looking into the genetics of things like respiratory infections, swine flu. You're widely heralded as helping solve what was the origin of this to better get ahead of it. And in COVID-19, people are looking to you, Professor. What do you find about the current virus and any of its evolution? Yeah, that's very interesting. So a virus is um, it's evolving, it's evolving, uh, it's changing. And we can look at the genome. The genome is like a history book where we can read where is this virus coming from and what are the changes that happened. And these changes, they happened in two, two ways. One, there are mutations, so small changes that happen in the virus. And this allows us to track the virus. This is how we know that, for example, in New York, viruses, they were coming from Europe or from Washington state. Um, so all these things we know from these mutations. And the other thing that happened in these viruses is they, they can mix. And they, have, they are like cocktails of viruses that they happened in many species like bats. And this produces new viruses and, and the, um, they're infecting humans and outbreaks, causing outbreaks. So what we are learning, uh, what we that... are learning from this virus uh -huh. is coming from bats, probably, and the, all the pieces for understanding the genome of this virus, they can be found in bats. You talk about how there are a few coronaviruses floating around out there, and you keep talking about mutations. Does that mean we could have a fifth, sixth, seventh, and it's just unpredictable? Or are there signs of when they're going to pop up? Well, there, there are some uh, efforts to do surveillance of these viruses, and we can try to understand how many of these viruses they are. But this is a very difficult problem because we don't have a complete understanding of how many viruses there are in different uh, animal species and what are the key ingredients that make one of these viruses able to infect humans. I see. Okay. Now, Professor, states are starting to relax their social distancing measures. You're in New York City. You know all about this. If we could just pull up a map right here that we have a key model often cited by the White House. It shows when states could begin relaxing their social distancing guidelines. No states here are listed before May 10th, but it shows states like Georgia, which are already in the process of reopening, they should wait until maybe late June. So considering what you know about viruses in general and what you're finding about COVID-19, anything we can do to ensure that there isn't this evolution or a second surge? I think there is no data yet to understand how this virus is going to evolve. And uh, we don't know exactly how many people have been infected here in New York. I mean, there are several estimates, but we don't know. And this probably is going to be kind of the first place where we are going to see a huge amount of the population infected. So we don't know yet. So unless we have more data, um, it's very hard to make an assessment. A leap of faith of sorts. Understanding Coronavirus, your book is coming out in July. Professor, I know a whole lot of people are looking forward to reading that and exactly what you have found and are projecting into the future. Dr. Raul Rabadan, thanks again tonight from New York City.